Dr. Marta is PhD biotechnology, work with homeopathy in Verona University. Okay, good. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here and to present to you our recent uh, result of our research. Uh, I'm presenting, uh, this title is a little bit generic, but uh, our recent result, results are more focused. In vitro testing of homeopathic medicine on bronchial cells. Uh, the pathologies of uh, airways are among the most common diseases, especially in pediatric age. And uh, the bronchial epithelial cells are first line of defense against the chemical and biological external aggressor. The majority of the upper respiratory tract infection are caused by rhinovirus, and so antibiotics may provide only a modest absolute benefit. Homeopathic therapies are very used in the treatment of common respiratory infection and the ear, nose, throat ailments. Often these are used with the hope of resolve ailment not successfully cured by other conventional drugs or as complementary treatment to reduce the consumption of uh, anti-inflammatory drugs or steroids that, that can have uh, adverse effects as, uh, as you know. Accordingly, there is a need for studies for the effectiveness of homeopathic medicine in the treatment of these respiratory diseases and on their mechanism of action. In this context, the University of Verona uh, started a scientific collaboration with the Standard Homeopathic Company in the USA with the aim of testing several components of the common, the common homeo medicines used in this field. Our study is based on the in vitro test of cellular viability and response, utilizing uh, um, a human cell line called the 16-HPE, which is widely employed for immunological and pharmacological studies. In our project, we uh, screened the protective effects of different homeodrugs commonly used in Norway's pathologies with cough symptoms, as you can see and recognize in this picture. In, in the screening experiments, the first part of our uh, research, the human bronchial cells were grown in uh, in, vitro, in microplates with the adjunct of the medicine at the lowest non-toxic uh, dilutions. It means 3x or 6x, including the control vehicle, uh, it is uh, the, uh, the solution, the solvent solution, and uh, some allopathic drugs as references. The cells were maintained for 24 hours in normal or stressing conditions, uh, obtained by exposure of the cells to different doses of cigarette smoke extracts, as I explain later. Finally, we measured the cell activity and the viability using chromogenic assays and the release of a panel of cytokines. We obtained interesting results with some of these remedies, uh, especially in the modulation of the cytokines, uh, but uh, for sake of brevity, we are not reporting it now. Uh, Drosera uh, actually retrieved the most promising results in cell protection and uh, was selected for further experiments. To get more insight uh, on the global effects of Drosera in the cells, we conducted a differential gene expression analysis at the genomic level using a modern technique that is uh, RNA sequencing. A brief uh, explanation to, uh, of the meaning of the approach. When, we, uh, when a cell is exposed, uh, is exposed to an environment, uh, input, an environmental input like uh, drug supplementation, the cells most probably respond through the modulation of the transcription of a, series of, of a series of genes producing RNA molecules. And uh, we, this, this will result in the change of proteins and finally in the adaptation of the phenotype and the metabolic activity to the input. Uh, gene, gene expression has been proven to be, to be very sensitive also to small perturbation and uh, small changes in the gene regulation network have a relevant impact to the cells. So it is a very sensitive uh, uh, tool. The differential gene expression analysis uh, compares the expression level of all the genes at the same time activated with the treatment with the level of the same genes without the treatment. Here we have 
a schematic view treated uh, with, with the control, and it, we measure the, the level of RNA production. So to do that, we should quantify the RNA, the RNA expression, the amount of RNA molecules, with all the genes at the same time, to compare to the control and to perform a statistical evaluation of the differences. The workflow uh, of the RNA sequencing experiments include the preparation of the dilution of Drosera and of the control, that is, the, the vehicle solution. Two decimal dilutions in water were performed uh, to reduce the ethanol title, otherwise it may be toxic for cells, and then uh, was added to the cell medium with a volume ratio of 1 by 10. Uh, the culture was treated only for three hours to evaluate the early response of the cell, uh, the cells to Drosera. Then RNA was extracted and the quality, con the quality was checked before uh, the RNA sequencing experiment procedures. The output, this is a complex technique that I cannot uh, describe very tec the technical aspect, but the output of this quantification is, the, expression, is the, expression, the quantification of the expression level of each gene, it are approximately 20,000 genes, in the control and in Drosera samples. And we performed the four replicated, replicated experiments. As a result of the statistical analysis, we define a list of 70 up-regulated genes and 47 down-regulated genes that uh, receive a statistical score of a p-adjusted uh, lower than 0 0.05, so a consistent number of genes. Uh, the differential expressed genes are defined by the statistical p-value, that is in this uh, called volcano plot, uh, is this axis, the log of the p-value. So the higher than this level is, uh, are significant, and then from the, uh, the are defined by the size of the, the exp expression difference, uh, that is the full change. I mean, that when uh, the, the list of genes that we selected are the upregulated group with the full change higher than 0.2, that means increase about a 30 percentage of the expression, and the downregulated that are uh, downregulated about 30 percentage of the, per or at least 30 percentage of the expression. Then we needed to find the biological significance of all these genes. And um, we performed the functional analysis of differential expressed genes uh, using bioinformatic tools, uh, public resources that contain a huge database of uh, gene uh, uh, information, gene ontology, gene annotation, and tools for specific queries of the list of genes. So we put, use this list as input in uh, one of these type of resources. And uh, what we obtained is uh, um, the gene list uh, uh, retrieve the statistically significant uh, biological processes that are potentially target of these genes. So it is the output, it's not our, my personal elaboration, but it is the output of these resources that find the significant, significant uh, biological process that are enriched in technically words by these genes. With the output of, the functional, of this functional analysis, we constructed uh, this network uh, that gives a complete uh, picture of the action of Drosera on, in the epithelial cells. The main nodes uh, that are highlighted by the arrows um, are in the network are the biological processes and they are connected with the genes sharing the same activity. Uh, if you cannot read very well, there is epithelial cell proliferation, the biological process, positive regulation of wound healing, and blood vessel morphogenesis and regulators of uh, angiogenesis. This is also a general biological process that is a negative regulation of phosphorylation. It, it is extraordinary for us to observe that the genes are correlated to perform a common function uh, of the regulation of the cell growth, the wound healing, and the angiogenesis. That is a very important uh, aspect of the healthy of uh, bronchial epithelial cell because if there's a, a leakage of this uh, uh, tissue, it is very uh, relevant for pathologies and inflammation. In particular, I focus on genes involved in the binding of the epithelial growth factor receptor. It is a really mm, important receptor. Uh, these are the genes that are binding of, uh, of this receptor, and then we have some genes involved in detoxification, some genes that are involved in immune regulation. 
Notably, four genes belong to the gene pathways of pertussis, uh, according to the Kaga analysis pathway. Drosera is commonly used for treatment of convulsing whooping cough and also, for, uh, also reported uh, in recent paper. Our results support, uh, from our point of, point of view, the hypothesis that this remedy could uh, be effective also in this disease. Uh, notably, it is uh, known that pertussis bo uh, toxin blocks uh, the production of IL-8, this, uh, this gene. So if this is increased, in, in this case it is increased by Drosera, uh, we can think that is a key factor explaining the therapeutic action. Of course, uh, this is an interesting uh, hypothesis uh, to serve more clinical uh, studies and to establish uh, the drug efficacy with suitable protocols. Moreover, we studied the effects uh, of Drosera in a model of cell injury by cigarette smoke extract. The cigarette uh, smoke exposure induces an injury in the bronchial uh, uh, tissue, including inflammation, uh, DNA damage, uh, also uh, uh, autophagy at death uh, or um, cell transformation after long exposure. But we applied uh, this uh, cigarette extra extract to epithelial cells at low di doses, at low doses, uh, using it as stress factors to simulate uh, the pathological condition. So we prepared uh, the liquid extract uh, of smoke by bubbling the, the smoke of the cigarettes uh, in PBS buffer, and then we added it at uh, subtoxic doses for two hours. The cells were, uh, were previously treated with one, for one hour with Rosera 3X or the control. And the RNA sequencing was also performed as I explained before. What we found is we observed that uh, CSC, uh, the, the smoke uh, the adjunct, modify more than 500 genes in the bronchial cells, even if uh, at uh, subtoxic doses, most involving the early stress response of the cells to this injury. In such, an, in such environment, so in such stressed cells, the Rosera 3X significantly modified the expression of 48 genes. Some are uh, regulated and some downregulated. Twelve of, the of these genes are changed by C the smoke, so are target of the smoke, but are target also of Drosera in this condition. I'm going now to focus on these two gr this group of genes. Uh, we compare the effects of Drosera in normal and this in, in this injured cells, wondering if the activity may depend on the status of the cell or not. We observe that Drosera downregulates some genes. In the in some downregulate these genes in both normal and CAC stress in the cigarette stressed cells. And this suggests that the genes are specific target for the medicine. And there are, are other two cases, so two, two examples of these genes. Interestingly, other genes, these are different genes, were downregulated in uh, smoke stressed cells, while in normal cells they are not modified. These are normal cells, and these are the stressed without the control and with the Drosera. And you see that we have uh, downregulation only in the condition of uh, stress. And this observation depicts a complex uh, pathway involved in the response of, uh, of the cells to Drosera. So, in summary, um, our data, our data suggests the following hypothesis of action. Drosera may modulate the mechanism of epithelial tissue healing through the regulation of the epidermal growth factor receptor function. It is a, a key receptor in this type of cells. And this receptor controls the morphogenesis and the meiosis of the epithelial tissue. This figure reports uh, the name of the genes that are target of Drosera in a sequence that represents their possible action. Uh, you so can follow the arrows. So cell, -cell contact, uh, a contact with the extracellular matrix, blood vessel morphogenesis, tissue meiosis. And, but uh, uh, you have no time to, uh, to enter in these uh, details. I only focus on a specific point, uh, just an example of what we have discovered. This is a particular of, this, of the, pres the previous picture. There are three genes uh, called amphiregulin, epiregulin, and epigenin. These are, uh, stimulate the proliferation of the bronchial cells and are activated by Drosera. Uh, this arrow is in, it means they are upregulated. On the other hand, we have this gene, RFI1, that is a feedback uh, regulator that usually inhibits those genes uh, and blocking their function. Well, what we observed in this uh, uh, analysis is that 
the, it, the, it is very interesting to find that the, our Drosera down regulates the expression of this inhibitor, and this is very coherent with the positive effect of the plants on cell proliferation and therefore on their healing in the bronchial mucosa. So, some conclusion looking forward. Well, conclude in general, our results confirm the importance of a research line that has been followed in the last decades by many researchers. For example, for Professor Kudabus, who was a pioneer in this field. The possibility to identify the targets of the myopathic drugs in the molecular level, as we have shown with Rosera as an example, opens wide horizon uh, for homeopathy itself. Uh, in few words, the knowledge of gene expression will contribute to the develop development of homeopathy in two main directions. The homeogenomics it contribute to the knowledge of basic mechanism of action of the medicine in order to identify their targets in cell and tissues. And this approach is extremely useful to defend and promote the rationality of the homeopathic therapy. The study of homeogenomics will help the knowledge of individual sensitivity to drugs, like uh, is happening, for example, in conventional pharmacogenetics. Uh, in our case, uh, is uh, even more important because we are interested in similarity between the individual genetic signatures and the possible effect of the medicine. I mean, if the two genetics profiles, uh, the one of the individual and the one of the drug, match, this knowledge could help the prescription uh, of the correct drug uh, for a specific individuals. So in future, it will be also very interesting to study the genetic signature or epigenetic signature of different groups of peoples that have in common the same medicine that cure them. So finally, of course, this perspective at the moment is, a, a, of course, a, a working hypothesis that awaits a lot of further work, both in basic laboratory research, like in our case, and uh, in the clinical settings. So finally, let me thank uh, my colleague, Primis Paolo Bellavite, my boss, uh, my colleague Fabio Ruda Silvia, uh, Silva, uh, other spo our sponsor, the Standard Homeopathic Company, and uh, people from the University of Verona who performed the, the rene -Seek, the Technology Platform Center, and our host in the Pathology Department, Professor Claudio Sorio. And thank you all for uh, your attention. Thank you.